You're busy looking at determinants and calculating determinants of square matrices using cofactor expansion. So let's look at some examples. In the first video, we've looked, we looked at where the formula comes from and how to determine the determinant. Now we're going to just do some more examples. So let's look at another 3 by 3 matrix. Just to remind you, determinant can only be calculated of a square matrix. We're starting with 3 by 3, we'll look at a 4 by 4 matrix as well. And then we'll look at some properties of determinants. So now, we noticed in the first video that you can use any row or any column to calculate the determinant, if I use cofactor expansion. So now we've got to be clever about this. Which row or column do we want to choose? Well, we want to choose one that has a zero in, because it makes our calculation easier. Let me show you. So cofactor expansion, the determinant of D is then 2 times minus 1. The exponent is row 2, column 1, so it's 2 plus 1, times the determinant. If I eliminate that row and that column, and I've got minus 1, 2, 5, 2. Then, plus 0, and it doesn't matter what I'm writing after 0. Whether I've multiplied with minus 1 and a determinant, I'm just going to get 0. So that makes our job so much easier. Plus minus 3 times minus 1 to the power row 2, column 3, so 2 plus 3, times the determinant, if I eliminate that row and column and I get 1, minus 1, 3, 5. So that gives me minus 1 to the power 3 is minus 1. So I've got minus 2 times minus 2 minus 10, so it's minus 12, plus 0. Here I've got minus 1 to the power 5, so it's minus 1 times minus 3, so I've got plus 3 times 5 minus minus 3, so it's 5 plus 3, which is 8. So I've got 24 plus 24, which gives me 48. So when calculating determinants by cofactor expansion, do yourself a favor and choose the row or the column with the most zeros in, because then it makes it pretty easy. I chose row 2, but remember, you can choose row 1, you can choose any other row or column, the answer will be the same. And that's a good way to practice determinants. So calculate, take one 3 by 3 matrix and calculate the determinant in six different ways, and you should get the same answer. And that will be good practice. All right, so let's just take a look just to make sure if I calculate this determinant, let's use column 3. Calculating about column 3, that's 2 times minus 1 to the power row 1 column 3, and the determinant of 2, 0, 3, 5, plus minus 3 times minus 1 to the power row 2, column 3, so 2 plus 3, determinant of 1, minus 1, 3, 5, plus 2 times minus 1 to the power row 3, column 3, times the determinant of 1, minus 1, 2, 0. And that gives us, and we're going a bit faster now because we've done this a couple of times, 2 times 10. This is minus 3, minus 1 times minus 3, so it's plus 3 times 5 minus minus 3, so it's 8, plus 2 times 0, minus minus 2, so 0 times 2. So it's 24. 34, 44 plus 4 is 48. So we get the same answer. So you can practice a lot of determinants using just one 3 by 3 matrix. All right, so what happens if we make the matrix a bit bigger? Here's a 4 by 4 matrix. Now, I purposefully chose my matrix very well. So there's quite a couple of zeros. So now you look at your matrix, you're like, okay, we're going to use cofactor expansion. The recipe stays the same, but the matrix is bigger now. I'm going to choose row 3. For obvious reasons, there's three zeros in there. So the determinant of C is just 0 plus 0 plus 5 times minus 1 to the power. I'm in row 3, column 3, so it's 3 plus 3. Times the determinant, if I eliminate that row and column. Now what happens here is I get a 3 by 3 matrix. And we don't have a shortcut for a 3 by 3 matrix. It's a bit of work. But we know how to do that work. We'll do that shortly. So that's that row. And then the last one is another zero. So there's not a lot of calculation here. So that gives me 5 times 1. So it's 5 times the determinant of that 3 by 3 matrix. 
How do I calculate the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix? With cofactor expansion. So now I'm going to choose row 2 because there's a 0 in it. So it's 1 times minus 1 to the power 2 plus 1 times the determinant of 1 minus 1 minus 3, 1. Plus 0 plus 2 times minus 1 to the power row 2, column 3, 2 plus 3. Eliminate that row and column, and I get 2, 1, 1, minus 3. So that is 5 times. Here I've got minus 1. So it's, let me just leave those big brackets so we can do the calculation first. I've got minus 1 times, that determinant is 1 minus 3, so it's minus 2, plus 0, minus 2 times, minus 6 minus 1 is minus 7. So in my brackets, I've got minus 16 times 5, or plus 16 times 5 is equal to 80. So that's the determinant of that 4 by 4 matrix. So there's a bit more work, and the bigger the matrices get, the more work it is. But you can see the process, finding determinants by cofactor expansion. And yet again, you can use a different row or column, and you will get the same value. So it's very nice to practice repeatedly. All right. So let us just look at some properties of determinants. I'm not going to prove these properties, but just mention them, and you can, we'll talk through them. The first one, we're looking at a square matrix that's greater than or equal to a 2 by 2 matrix. If any row or column consists entirely of zeros, then the determinant is zero. Now, that would make sense if we look at the previous example. If this 5 was also a zero, there'll just be zeros. There's nothing else. So if there's a row, one row or column consisting of zeros, your determinant is zeros. Then if every entry of a row or column is multiplied by a factor, then the determinant also changes by that factor. Yet again, you can look at some examples and see why this would make sense. Then an interesting one to look at is that if I change two rows or columns of a matrix, the sign of the determinant changes. And you can practice on some of them. This is just an interesting property. Then, if I've got two identical rows, then the determinant is zero. And then this number five, you can look at. It's a little bit complicated. This comes in handy at some stage. But if I'm multiplying entries with different cofactors, I will get zero every time if i is not equal to j. Take some time and look at that. And then if any multiple of a row or column is added to a different row or column, then the determinant is unchanged. And this might remind you a bit of Gaussian elimination, and as it should, that if I multiply add a multiple of a row or column to a different row or column, my determinant stays the same. So these are some properties of determinants that I'm going to leave you with.